Ah, que eu já estou com saudade. A gente vai chegando, mas também já sabe que vai fazer a última dessa temporada. Né, meu amor? Boa noite, Di. Boa noite, Dívia. Boa noite, quem está chegando. Bom dia, boa tarde e boa noite para quem nos vê depois. Ou quem é de outro lugar do mundo. Isso, histórias com Oxo são como ondas que se espalham. A gente está hoje celebrando o encerramento da terceira temporada, quem diria. Uau! 77 encontros, cada um mais lindo que o outro, melhor que Netflix. Ah, sem dúvida, <risos> sem dúvida, amor. Olha só, Deva Guirisha, Fátima Dara, Alicia Kilma, gente, boa noite, minhas queridas, chegando aqui, muito bom. A gente entra assim, né, no, no ao vivo, né, entrou no Facebook, né, aí de repente começa o olhinho a aparecer, assim, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, fala, ai, a sanguinha chegando, dá uma alegria no coração. <risos> A é? Dívia, é, com certeza, não, isso é um feito, né? É um feito, são, é muita gente linda, muita gente conectada, muita gente linda participando aqui, seja assistindo, seja dando seus depoimentos, isso nos enche de alegria. É verdade, é muito e nos bom. nos pegou, Oxo, Histórias com Oxo nos, nos pegou meio a uma pandemia, né? um momento tão difícil, tão dramático. É verdade. E dramático também no Brasil, com toda a situação, com o caos político e tudo. Né? Então, aqui é o nosso bálsamo, o nosso refresco, é. nossa a conexão. A gente estava no, no isolamento, né, Vi? Estavam os dois lá, você aí, eu aqui. Né? De repente, a gente se uniu nessa ideia maravilhosa. E agora essa ideia maravilhosa que, que empurra a gente. <risos> e a gente não desgrudou mais. Eu acho isso tão gostoso, tão lindo. É, a gente... Que... Você já compartilhou das páginas? Eu, não, não compartilhei. Eu estou aqui falando sem parar. Tá, eu vou é. compartilhar, vou te botar na tela grande aqui. <risos> Enquanto a Dívia vai fazendo os compartilhamentos, eu vou dar os recados, nossos recados básicos. Primeiro, com os agradecimentos à nossa equipe de apoio, com Miguel Fine, Farita, que faz um magnífico, fazem um magnífico trabalho pra, de apoio para a gente. Sem eles, não seria possível né? todo é, esse capricho na, na arte de divulgação, na edição de vídeos e tudo mais. Muito obrigado, nossa fa grande família HCO. E também a querida Catarina Lira, que nos dá um apoio com as legendas bem bacana. Também agradecemos os grupos de Oxo no Facebook, Oxo Sem Fronteiras, liderados pelo Gabriel Sananda, e o Oxo e Nova equipe. Realidade, e, e equipe, grande equipe, né? cheia de estrelas, Dívia, Champac, Aboda, e mais uma galera, Isso. Xante. Mas... Sim, Ananda, é, querido. Que, que Maia, né? Ananda que Maia, Ananda também que Maia. o Magno. O Magno, então um abraço a todos. Ao Oxo, a nova realidade do Francisco Siqueira. A gente também faz parte da equipe do Francisco. É, você Esse... faz, é, você faz é, o Mais ou menos. <risos> Só está o nome lá. <risos> Mas são as páginas de Oxo com um grande número de seguidores, tem mais de 120 mil seguidores, eu acho. Cada uma nos, delas. Né? Nos apoiam para a gente transmitir ao vivo e divulgar esse trabalho para alcançar mais gente que se interesse pelo trabalho do Oxo. Também agradecemos a nossos apoiadores que fazem doações. Pix! Nossos apoiadores, Pix! A Divi apoia nos comentários fixos, a, no comentário fixo aqui da, do chat, a, a chave Pix de apoio, para quem puder nos ajudar, qualquer valor é muito bem-vindo. Também uh, agradecemos a nossa querida Sanguinha, que desde o início está com a gente aqui, tem um 
um tantão de gente que tá toda terça-feira está aqui. É o nosso programa de terças-feiras, muito legal. É um encontro mesmo é no, que nos motiva a continuar fazendo isso essa participação de vocês, os chats no meio da live, a, a, a memória que vocês colocam, né? Assim, ah, isso eu também estava lá, ah, isso era assim, acrescentando alguma informação. Então, todo esse movimento que vocês fazem aqui deixa mais rica a nossa transmissão, o né, nosso programinha aqui de terça-feira. Também é o nosso recado sério, né, que não somos um canal oficial do Oxo, somos um grupo de amigos contadores de histórias. Histórias com Oxo. <risos> Olha, gente, mais uns recados bem bacanas aqui. O primeiro deles, o Champak e o Nissargan, que já estiveram dando seus depoimentos aqui para a gente. Na primeira temporada, o Nissargan, na segunda, o Champak. Eles estão começando um trabalho bem legal, que uhum. chama Oxocast, o podcast do Oxo. Do Oxo, achei genial esse nome, gente, adorei. Oxocast. São, são duas feras que estão há muito, muito tempo envolvidos com o Oxo no Brasil. Uhum. E, e eles começaram esse trabalho, fizeram alguns ensaios e começa oficialmente nesta quinta-feira, dia 30, às 20 horas, no YouTube. Abraço, Champaque, abraço, Nissargan, parabéns pela iniciativa. É, tudo amor. Tamo aí, junto, tudo tamo junto. Para informações, pode procurar no Instagram no e no Facebook é. pelo nome Oxo Inspirador. Que é outro eles nome começam, lindo. Isso, eles começam essa semana com o título Oxo, o Rebelde. Vai falar sobre rebeldia, que é um tema que me agrada demais. Que é muito é. legal da ideia deles, que eu gostei bastante, Champak, Nis, Argan, é, é colocar uh, na prática uh, assuntos relacionados ao Oxo. Né? Por exemplo, muita, muita confusão que as pessoas fazem sobre buscador, né? quem é buscador, e, como é que funciona a linguagem mesmo de um saniase dentro do, do Oxo. Isso esclarece muita coisa. É uma é legal, diferença tá... enorme. Muito bacana a visão deles, né? uh, a experiência, o insight deles em cima da visão do Oxo. Então, então todos convidados, nosso Sim. apoio e nosso abraço para essa iniciativa. Sim. Também temos uma iniciativa muito bacana, da Dívia, minha querida companheira, que ela está... Uh, chamando as pessoas toda quarta-feira às 18 horas começa a Kundalini pelo Zoom é, já vamos para a terceira ou quarta eu já perdi a conta já Também. tem uma já tem uma turma bem bacana vindo com a gente pessoal esse, essa Kundalini é uma meditação do Osho para quem não não conhece uma das uh, carro-chefe do, do, do trabalho do Osho Kundalini é uma meditação básica muito bonita, muito gostosa, muito prazerosa de fazer. É uma meditação ativa, se usa e se trabalha bastante o corpo e a expressão corporal para antes de sentar em meditação. né? Então, quem quiser conhecer, a Dívia vai dar o serviço aqui, tem que chegar um pouco antes e tem que pedir o link, porque não é transmitido ao vivo. Ela é feita no Zoom particular. Então, quem quiser participar, quem tiver interesse, como é que faz, Dívia? É, ai, ó, o Guita tá aqui falando gostoso demais, eba, porque ele tá vindo, <risos> querido. É, quem quiser, me, só colocar aqui que quer, ou pode achar, me achar no, no Messenger, no, no direct do Instagram. O meu WhatsApp tá no começo da minha página, dia 10 aqui do Facebook também, você pode ir lá. Eu atendo todas as mensagens, eu tô de olho sempre. Né, nos recados, e aí eu envio o link, ou mesmo aqui no, no, no próprio chat dessa live, tá? E é toda quarta-feira, todas as quartas, inclusive julho, a gente continua, um jeito da gente se encontrar toda semana, pelo menos rapidinho ali para meditarmos juntos, e às 18 horas. Quem quiser chegar, chega antes, porque o Zoom às vezes... 
leva um tempo para abrir, a gente liga uma musiquinha. 15 para as 8, eu entro no Zoom e abro 15. o salão. Né? 15 para as 6. 15 para as 18. 15 para as 18, né? para as 6 da tarde. Eu Isso. entro e aí tem uma musiquinha, você pode já chegar, ouvir a música, sai do pouco do mundo, já vai se preparando. Às 18 em ponto, a gente começa com Daline e aí não dá para entrar mais porque eu também estou meditando, então não, não controlo mais as entradas. E está muito rico, está muito rico. Cada um está trazendo gente. Quem não conhece, pode vir, pode vir meditar. Quem precisar das instruções, eu mando antes também, já para a pessoa se familiarizar. Enfim, é um ponto de encontro em meditação, é, absolutamente viável, né? E de graça, gente! Bora! A gente está <risos> junto! <risos> tá muito legal, eu não perco. Eba! Olha só, olha só. É... Então, uh, a gente volta uh, depois, né, para dar os últimos recados, depois de passar essa linda entrevista ah. com essa artista maravilhosa. Vocês vão ficar encantados com ela. E. E também, é, como eu falei antes, é a nossa encerramento da terceira temporada, nós voltamos no início de agosto, primeira terça-feira de agosto, que eu não lembro agora se é dia 2 ou dia 3, mas a gente vai divulgar bem, ter uma entrevista espetacular, de uma pessoa muito próxima ao Oxo. Muito, muito. Muito próxima, vocês vão ver. É, é, aliás, pro, o quarto, a, a, a quinta, te, não, quarta temporada, é que parece <risos> quinta, né? Mas a quarta temporada, gente, já está assim, com o materialzinho pronto, já encaminhado, bem legal, de gente, né, não só uma, mas algumas pessoas bem próximas ao Oxo, com histórias muito tocantes. Muito, muito bacana. A gente, a primeira, preparem-se. <risos> de arrebatar. Arrebatar. Muito e lindo. o que eu queria falar dessa, que foi assim, uma delícia, né? Conhecer e conviver um pouquinho com a Padma nessa entrevista, mas como é rico o processo de criação desses artistas, né? Como é rico, da onde vem né, esse misterioso caminho? E, a, e essa obra que ela deixou com o tarô do Oxo. Porque não é, é uma arte, uma arte que comunica, e uma arte que comunica algo a mais, como um tarô. Né? Então, então, gente, a gente ficou derretido. Espero que vocês gostem. É, e fiquem <risos> até o final, porque ela faz uh, explica sobre o novo trabalho que ela está lançando em breve, que é algo espetacular. Ai, Div... mágico, mágico. Div... Divirtam-se, como nós. <risos> e aí, é para começar? Lá? Não, Bora sim, lá? não, como é que é, gente? Vocês estão então, tá, aí, gente. então vamos lá, a gente vamos no lá. final aparece, tá? Isso aí, grande beijo, até o final. Até. Let's go, Divya is gonna ask you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How did Joshua came into your life? Okay. I, uh, I had a lover in New York. I was living in New York. I was part of a spiritual institute in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I was creating very large meditation yantras, which were huge canvases of symbols that people would use for meditation. And so I was painting these very big things. Oscar Ichazo was the- uh, Ichazo from Enneagram. Yes. Uh -huh. So I was involved with Ichazo. And ah, I was per personally- really? Yes, personally involved with him. Wow. So I was part of his institute in New oh, York okay. and I was completely immersed in the Achazo work. Wow. Oscar was an extraordinary man, and I believed that he was my teacher. 
Mm -hmm. I had no interest in looking anywhere else for any other spiritual guidance because what mm -hmm. Ichazo was offering was for me the way. Mm -hmm. But I had a boyfriend who was um, always looking into different kinds of things. And he was reading the, a book called The Way of the White Clouds. He took me on a vacation to the Virgin Islands. And while we were on the airplane, he's reading this book, reading this book, and I'm sort of looking over his shoulder. You know, what is this book? Anyway, he mm -hmm. said, you know, this amazing Indian speaking about extraordinary things. I didn't pay any attention to it. Anyway, later on, back in New York, he's reading another book by this same Indian guru. And then he tells me one day, we're having dinner in, in a cafe in New York City, and he says he's going to go to India to meet this guru. And I said, great, have a good time. <laughs> I was not interested in going to India. India, you know. India now, no. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I said, I'll see you when you get back. And he said, okay, you know. And then by the end of the evening, we're sitting and having our exchanges and so on. By the end of the evening, I, out of the blue, I said to him, I want to go with you to India. He said, do you have a passport? I said, no. He said, you're going to need a passport. We're leaving in 10 days. Okay, so long story. I get my passport leave my daughter with her husband, my former husband and my parents, and I fly off to India. And the first night that we're in Pune, we have darshan. Now, I did not know what darshan was. I did not know what sannyas was. We were staying in the Blue Diamond Hotel in Pune. Uh, my friend had made an appointment at the ashram for us to see this teacher and so we were told to be freshly washed fresh clothes no fragrance and come at I don't know what time 6 37 something like that for darshan with with uh Bhagwan mm. uh, this was like you know for me this was like okay we're gonna go to a special theater production or something I didn't know anything we go to the ashram and there's people in maroon clothes and we go through a gate and then we get taken into this place called the Darshan porch. And we're sitting there on the floor, on the marble floor, waiting. And a door opens and a fragrance comes in first before you see anyone else. A few other people had come and were sitting. And there's this fragrance. And I'm looking, you know, like in the dark uh, frame of the door, I see the beginning of a figure entering the space with this fragrance becoming stronger. And as he entered the space, the feeling was of the ground shifting underneath and inside. It was one of... Um, knowing that your life is changing completely in that moment. There was this kind of like, you know, when they talk about an earthquake and the tectonic plates rub against and then everything mm -hmm. is like this whole changing. It was like that only happening inside. And I didn't understand it. I didn't, I didn't know, is it because of this man? What, you know, what? I, what? you know, the mind just was just kind of blown. So, he sits down and there's been no uh, talking. There's been no explanation of anything. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting right straight in front of him. There's about maybe a dozen people in total. Mukta was there, uh, Vivek was there. And I'm the first person that's called up. My name is called to come and sit you know, so I move, I come forward and sit. And he says, the very first thing that uh, comes out of his mouth, he says, are you ready for sannyas? I didn't know what it was. I said, I don't know. And he said, 
you are. Close your eyes. So I close my eyes and he gives me the name, Deva Padma. And then the words being shared around the meaning of the name was so profound as it is for each one who receives sannyas. The new name is a new beginning of a new life. And he said, you are the, Deva is the divine, it is the bridge. Lotus is Padma. You cannot have the lotus without the mud. You are the divine flowering, rising out of the mud. And I, how do you say? I want to say I fell in love, but lo it is, was not a falling. It was a, a rising of recognition. And I've come to understand, now this is not the recognition from back then, it is the reflecting upon the recognition now here, the old lady sitting with you. It was the recognition of life as being a blessing. All that is embraced in the life, all the mud and the flowering and the fragrance that moves after the flower is even passed. So it's the, the grace of existence that he was awakening me to see and perceive and feel his divine grace. And in that single precious moment of receiving the name that for this being was the key that unlocked understanding on a profound level, the understanding of the all embracing nature, the dark and the light, the tragedy and the joy, uh, the mud and the lotus and the stink, he said, and the stinkier the mud, the more beautiful the flower. So as an artist who makes a lot of messes, <laughs> who is a very chaotic, wow. fiery nature, <laughs> You know, who has created disaster after disaster for my family, okay. you know, so many problems, you know, and yet, and yet, what wonder has occurred as well out of all of that. So this for me, if I'm going to kind of, you know, put it in a you hold it in a nutshell that I can offer as like, okay, what does Osho mean to you? Okay. He presented the seed. He said, okay, this is the seed of your being. Now let's watch it crack open. Let's see what, you know, but you are the flower that is contained within that. So come on, don't be afraid. Get on with it. And don't censor life by saying, oh, no, 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 no. Test, tread carefully where there's uncertainty. It's all fine, but you are the flowering. So come on. So here we are. You said it was 68? You, I you met uh, Osho first time. No, I came to Osho in seventy-five. Ah, seventy-five. My, path, ah, okay. my journey began in the late nineteen sixties. Yeah, okay. I did the first Arika training in um, sixty-nine. I had my daughter in sixty-eight. Did the first Arika training with the Chazo in sixty-nine and did the advanced training in New York in 1970. Okay. 
So from that point, it, it, did you stay longer in Pune? You went back to your home. How was it? We stayed in India for, I think it was till about August. I took sannyas in May. And we did some traveling. Uh, how to describe? Uh, the man that I was with was very wealthy, my partner, and um, some Buddha. He, he became uh, some Buddha. And he wanted to travel. He wanted to explore India. And Osho made, he said, very good. He suggested uh, that we visit a place in northern India where Osho used to stay. Uh, and so um, Osho was very supportive of anything that uh, we were going to do. He, you know, we were totally free to do go, come, go. Back then, there were no people living as such. The ashram wasn't uh, with lots of people living there. People had huts and so forth outside or lived in others other locations, we were living in the Blue Diamond. We had a suite in the Blue Diamond and we lived there and traveled to Srinagar. And then while uh, we were in Srinagar, we, we wanted to go to Ladakh, which used to be part of Tibet. And Ladakh was closed, had been closed to tourists. There were no tourists allowed there. It had been closed because of uh, war, not mm -hmm. in Ladakh, but in Northern India. And mm -hmm. um, while we were in New Delhi, the hotel, we were staying at the Taj Hotel, and my friend went to the travel agency there and he asked about Ladakh and the travel agent said, they're opening it wow. this week. Ah. This is in 1975. Wow. He said, they're opening it this week. So you will be able to go. So we decided, all right, we're going to go. And so what we did was we wanted to go to the place that Osho had said he had stayed in, in Pelagam. And so we went to Pelagam first and stayed in the camp where Osho used to stay. When he, Pelagam is very beautiful. It's in the mountains green valley in the foothills of the Himalayas and we hired horses and we went from Pehlgam on horseback to a place called Gulmarg. Uh, it was a three-day journey to Gulmarg and then from there we took a jeep and went in an 18-hour jeep trip to Lay wow. Ladakh. Wow. Now when we went to Ladakh, there were no tourist facilities. There was nothing. There were no hotels. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. And the driver of our Jeep was, um, he was a Muslim man. And he had done this route along the, where the army convoys would go on this road between India and Ladakh for the military. So he was very familiar with this route. And um, when we first arrived in Leh, I became very ill from the altitude sickness because we'd been climbing, climbing, and the body was struggling. And so it was a, there was a bit of a delay. And then, of course, we went into Leh and were taken in by a family, a Ladakhi family, that let us stay in their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we got back to Pune, Osho said, how was the trip? And he wanted to know if we'd stayed in the place. And we told him that the cabin uh, that he had stayed in, we weren't able to stay in, but we stayed in the one next to it. And Osho chuckled. And, you know, out of that journey, uh, some Buddha had been talking about, you know, wanting to do some sort of import export business of things from India to America and we'd seen so many amazing things and anyway out of all of that uh, an import export company was formed and named by Osho he said you you start uh, this uh, business Padma will create the things you let Padma run the run the design of this business 
Sambuda, you just rest on your bed and relax. She will take care of everything. It will be what? named it will be named Shri, Shri Import Export Company. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't <laughs> I didn't expect that that was going to be the course that all of this was. So out of all of this, years of becoming involved as a person, my personal sadhana, my personal work became creating things that were going to be going out into the world in the master's name. <laughs> so, you know, at one point I, I went to him and said, Osho uh, Bhagwan, there's so many things that I love to do. I love to dance. I, I love to paint. I love to sew. I love to sing. And he said, you drop everything you just sew. What? You just sew. It's an unfinished karma. Mm -hmm. So the next day we go to MG Road, we hire a sewing machine. We bring it to the house. <laughs> I'm going, what am I going to sew? Well, they have all these shops with all these beautiful colored cloths. So I buy many colored cloths. He said, Osho oh, said, you, no need to worry about what, just sew. So I'm stitching together all these colored cloths. And out of that then comes months later, fashion shows and going to Bombay and going to New Delhi and, you know, Sanyas fashion and the rainbow colors and, you know, newspaper articles and, and the import export company and get going back and forth to New York because of fashion business in New York. Then comes the theater group that, you know, productions and costumes and this and that. This went on for years. So Padma, this Padma was spending more time in trains planes, taxis, traveling and moving about, doing work in the name of the master and creating in an unlimited way because he was very specific with me. He did not provide me with any particular function not like, okay, now you're going to be doing uh, groups. No groups. I wanted to do groups. No groups. Uh, I said to him, what's my best meditation? He said, creativity is your meditation. Yeah. You have some idea that uh, your meditation is close your eyes, sit down with hands in your lap. No, no, no. Creativity is your meditation. Whatever you create, wherever the energy wants to pour, dissolve in that. Allow it, invite it, and share it. This um, invitation by Osho was also a, uh, you know, knocking on the door. Come on. Who is there? What wants to be created today? And that's how I have lived my life. And many, 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 many things have been created. Books and, and artwork and ex exhibitions all over the world. And it has not become less. People say, oh, by the time you're old, you slow down. And, you know, you go in and become peaceful and quiet and rest and relax in the beauty of, the, you know, fuck that. This life is like fucking exploding. It's like, you know, forget the one lotus. It's a whole booming pond filled with flowers showering, coming up from the ground, out of the water. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and it makes me laugh because, you know, um, I, I, in the writing that I'm doing now, so much of 
what is coming through is life is an opportunity. It is, it is, it's like, you know, when children love Christmas morning, what's in the presents under the tree? They're so excited to see what's inside that box. Well, that's what life is. It's like a box, you know. And one day there might be nothing in there. Another day there might be a million things in there. But there's always that, there's always that, um, there's always that joy of not knowing. And what can I do with this? You know, if I turn it this way or that way, if I throw it up in the air, what happens? If I pound it, what happens? If I rub it, what happens? This is, uh, this is, uh, Osho used to call it totality. He used to say, be total. Whatever you're doing, be total. What does totality mean? It means immersion. It means melting into it so completely that there's no separation of, I am here doing this. It's like, this is happening through. And my experience with uh, creating art, many people have known me for my Buddha paintings. They say, how do you do that? Where does that come from? And I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I am always as surprised as everybody else. They go, oh my God, Padma, that is so beautiful. Wow. Where did, where did you get that idea? There is no idea. There is no idea. Things just come. And one thing sort of merges into another thing. And then as that one's coming, then something else is going over here. And then you look there and then, oh, So he was a magician. He was a magician of the mystic, mystical. He was very, very, very tricky because he knew that if this wasn't going to capture you, that would. And I was deeply in love with Osho. And he has changed my entire life. And that love has changed my entire life. He provided the vehicle. But the love is what has done the work. He was the excuse. We need, we need the other to be in love with. We need the other to fall into and to adore. But it's the love that does the work because it has no beginning and it has no end. <laughs> that, that's why we love to be with artists. <laughs> <laughs> that's something amazing amazing yes. so so beautiful <laughs> so i feel you i feel you right there you're right there you're right here sitting present beautiful yeah so this is how, you know, we hear, we read the words and we hear the words existence provides. Well, that's how existence provides for, for the artist. That is not working from the sketch that they did three months ago that they then are gonna articulate into this, that, and the other thing. No, no, no. This is how arts, art lives in the moment 
is born in the moment. You know, this artist that everybody knows about, the street artist, the graffiti artist named Banksy, that does these amazing images on the sides of buildings that people like cut out the side of the building because the image is so relevant and so profound. Well, those are done in the moment, in the night, in the dark, from the heart, a commentary in the here and now. Yes. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful to hear that. Beautiful, very beautiful. And uh, now you have a new work. Yeah. You want to talk yes. us about this? Oh my God. Oh, what a thing this has been. You know, uh, again, like these stories that I've been telling you. I began this project in 2008 and I wanted it to be a vehicle for the voice of the divine feminine. And by feminine, I don't mean girly, girly. I mean the sacred she, the great mother, the mm -hmm. wisdom of the, what in Taoism is called yin. And this is a voice that I feel the world has become so out of balance, so heavily weighted on the side of the male masculine uh, reasoning mind mm. that creates wonderful things and also terrible things. And yes. I wanted to create a deck that would address and give voice to the wisdom of, uh, I will call it the great mother. I call her the sacred she. And she is the vehicle that has birthed all that we experience as life. She is the womb that births and receives and dissolves and disperses and takes away. She's the beginning, she's the ending and the beginning again. And so this deck, which I'm creating in the format of a tarot, 78 mm -hmm. cards in the tra tradition of a major and a minor arcana, it is touching on aspects that I feel are very much needing to be addressed now. There are certain qualities that in the Zen Tarot, for example, and in my Tao Oracle deck, which is based on the I Ching, those decks cover many, many things. But in some cases in the Sacred Chi, I will be going even deeper into the nuances of those things, underpinnings, the, the bones and the blood of those things some of the subjects that I'm working with are very uh, challenging. The world that we live in today is hugely challenged. We've got war going on. There's always in one place or another some kind of war, but now we're really dealing with the horrors of war and pandemic, mm -hmm. disease and illness and the climate and the death of so many species and much strife and much fear and anxiety. So these are things that I am now giving a voice to addressing in this deck, as well as the means for being able to transform, change, shift the perspective to widen it so that one can see not just the terror of what is being shown on the television or in the computer, but observing oneself as one sees these things and then taking that observation and widening it out and looking from a different perspective a broader perspective where we respect life as being here for us to grow and to become wiser. 
and to become more aware and to perceive the foolishness of becoming too involved in the dictates of the mind and the boundaries that we set up that separate rather than join us as a species, as a people that are just another form of animal that happens to be living on this beautiful earth. We are animals, but we are animals that have the capacity for consciousness. And so in embracing our brothers and sisters, the birds, the fish, our fellow humans, the trees, by embracing all of it, taking responsibility for the wholeness, for the well-being, for the health of it all, that's what the sacred she is for. That's what wow. this deck is for. Wow. And it is very, very beautiful. And since 2008, when I began, I have had cancer. I have had open heart surgery where my heart was removed from my body. There have been fire storms that have raged through the area where I live. And I'm still here. And the deck is still happening. And it is coming to completion now. And I needed to go through every one of those experiences. Facing death. Facing illness. Facing the terror of an environment that is in catastrophe. And all of that needed to be experienced for me to be able to finish this deck. If I had finished it in 2008 when I had started it, it would be a cheap version of what it is becoming now. Wow. That's beautiful to hear all of it. When it's going to be released? Yeah, well, this is the big question. The publisher, there are three publishers that are uh, going to be involved in, the, in starting it. One of them is a very, very big American publisher with a co-publishing house that is partnered. And then an Italian publisher that has just bought the rights for Italy. And um, the contracts are being written up now. And I do not have a date yet, but I have been told that I need to turn over all the artwork by September. So I imagine that it will be a year. I imagine that in, uh, let's say September, this is just a guess, because the world is changing every day. But I'm guessing that toward the latter part of 2023 or the early part of 2024, it will come out. And it is called The Sacred She. And it's beautiful. Look for it. And for God's sake, get it into Portuguese language so that people in Brazil can enjoy it because yes it yes yes <laughs> yes absolutely. I will let you know I will yes. let you know as soon as we have target okay. dates I will send you a message and let you know please please yeah, do that yeah and also I will uh once we have the contracts done mm -hmm. I will send you a few images so that <sighs> Because you're okay. gonna be blown, you're gonna be blown away. I want okay. blown away. I promise. Wow! You. Wow! wow. We, we are just yeah. longing that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it's very exciting. That. Yes, you know, Please. and I'm feeling like it's kind of like having a birthday party, and you're inviting the whole planet to your party. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. It feels like okay. I made this thing. You know, in Mexico, they have these pinatas that they break and all the candies and toys come out. It's like that. It feels like, 
you know? And here's the other thing that's gonna be so beautiful about it, because my other two decks, and all other decks, for God's sake, it's gonna be a perfect partner to bring an additional insight and uh, depth into any tarot reading. I don't care what cards you like to play with for uh, guidance for, for therapists or anybody. It's just gonna be an additional tool to facilitate in-depth work for unraveling the uh, barriers that we've been conditioned to think are our reality, to unravel that, dismantle that, and see the way through that into a totally another way, a totally another perspective and approach to living here today on planet Earth. Wow. Uh, amazing, wow. amazing. Well, <laughs> I think we are coming to <laughs> end our talk. Wow, it was so beautiful. beautiful. I just so want to say one more touching. thing to you. This doesn't need to be included. Sure, sure. Just, Take your time. My daughter yeah. goes to Brazil. She's been going to Brazil every year for years. Last ah. few years with COVID, she doesn't. But her mm -hmm. dance, she is a, my daughter is a dance uh, dancer and she uh, teaches people. Rosangela Silvestri has been her uh, mentor for many years. So Tika goes to Bahia. Bahia. Yeah. Right. And has been going to Bahia for decades. And you never, never came? No, I've never, I've never been to South no. America. My, I think my traveling, my, I don't know, you know, who knows? But um, with, you know, now I'm, I don't leave the property. I'm basically living like a hermit. But mm -hmm. um, my daughter's love for Brazil is like, oh, my God. You know, and she speaks fluent. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 Her two favorite places on the planet are Brazil, uh, three favorites Brazil, Mexico, and Cuba. Wow. Uh -huh. Oh, all She's Latin. Yeah. All Latin. All Latin. All Latin. Yes. She looks Latin. She's tall. She looks like an Amazon. Beautiful, mm -hmm. strong, and amazing wow. dancer. Amazing. Wow. Dancer. She grew up. In in Puna. Mm. Oh, if she comes to dance, to you let us know. I will okay. let you know. For please, sure. please, I would, please. Would love her. She is. For wonderful. sure, for sure, we we would love it. Yeah. So oh. let's talk about the sacred she. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes the beautiful sacred she. This. Uh, amazing project has been going on for a very long time but in the last maybe year it has taken on a different form in terms of involving um, dear friends who I've known for 30 40 years um, into the process so that now the texts that I'm writing for the book will be accompanied by insights from different people who are working as professionals in the world in various ways, whether as a, a, a psychotherapist, a body worker, a midwife, a healer, um, a tantra master, you name it, but they all are recognized on the global stage as being um, uh, people of integrity in particularly in their area of expertise. And so a while ago, I wrote a message to diff these different friends, inviting them to participate in this project, not knowing whether anybody would have time or whether they'd want to or whatever. And 
it has been the most marvelous experience for me because in a way I because I live so remotely so you know kind of cut off from all uh, gatherings and you know we're just very very removed and as artists that is our preference we choose to be removed from the activities of others but in this way there's been this feeling of it's as if I'm sitting in a room with a group of friends. There's this, there's this exchanging going on. I, what I'm doing is I'm sending one image to one person that somehow it felt like that's the image that really, I would love to hear what he or she has to say about this particular thing. And um, it's just blowing my mind. It's so cool because apart from the fact that it's offering so much to the project, it's also touching my heart. And it's for the people that are getting the card and the email and then the invitation to speak about what comes up for them in terms of their own reflecting on their own life. It's just been, people are saying, oh my God, this is really extraordinary because it's helping me to look into a part of myself that, I haven't looked at for a long time or that I had forgotten about or that I had buried. So here we are. This is another new set of imagery. You know, everybody has the beautiful other decks that I've done, but this particular vehicle now is opening the door on a whole new spectrum of um, means for reflecting upon ourselves and some of them are really tough you know um some of them are really you know like going into grief and going into um repression the buried uh animal nature that deserves acknowledgement because it is it holds the key to certain empowerment that we otherwise, as long as we deny it in, in ourselves, we are always in conflict about it because we're trying to keep it down. And it actually needs to be acknowledged. It's part of what makes us whole. And as long as we are seeking wholeness, our animal nature needs to be embraced. So, you know, these are aspects that are, um, gosh, it's been so amazing. And it's this way in creating the art. It starts always for me in creating the art. Uh, and going there means feeling there, being there, smelling and tasting. And, you know, like, in the visceral quality of the, that space. And um, I think this is why for many artists, they need to be separate because otherwise if they were out and about in the marketplace, people would go, whoa, that guy or that woman is really weird. You know, we live what we create. If, you, if you're not living it, it doesn't have that ring of truth. It doesn't have that fragrance of reality in it. One more thing that's kind of clever and interesting and cute, but it doesn't really bang you on the head or punch you in your chest. It doesn't make you feel more alive. So, and that's what I'm aiming for with the sacred she, because it is the voice of the divine feminine. And because that voice has been absent in so much of our lives. I'm, I'm wanting to just kind of bring her into the space. And when she enters the space, she takes up a lot of room. She's a big force and she is as beautiful as she is awesome. And as awesome as she is, whoa, scary and as tender as a mother with a newborn baby. She's all of it. 
So when we're invited into her inner sanctum, um, we are given a, a, a real opportunity to invoke her in our own lives. She's always been there, but we've just been, for many of us, out of touch. Um, life today for so many people is full of enormous challenges and, um, and a lot of things that are, are disturbing and worrisome. And this deck is meant to reinforce the integrity of who we are as people on the path, working toward integrating our, ourselves into the wholeness of being full human beings. And that journey is a sacred journey. And the sacred she is there to support that journey. Wow. The and I will, I will show you Mother Nature. She is most probably going to be on the box. She will be the face of the package. Yes. And she is an artwork that took me many months to create because it is very, very intricate. It's almost like a stained glass. It's very precise, many little parts because I wanted her whole face and being to be constructed of our nature, the flowers, the animals, the birds, the sky, the planet, our bodies, the oceans, the lightning and the sun, all. So she's wow. made up of all of those parts. She is the nature. She is our existence. Um, and another one of the images that I love so much is the image of spontaneity. And in the traditional tarot, she would be called uh, the queen of wands. In the sacred she, she is spontaneity and she is very dynamic. She's always on the move. She has a fiery nature. She's absolutely gorgeous, but she's like moving so quickly that you, you know, she kind of comes in and goes out and you, you what was that? There's that quality of like, oh my God. And there's also a, a space of her being, she has a she has a, uh, a a leopard beside her, and she's holding a mask of a falcon, and she's looking at you from the mask from behind the mask. The falcon symbolizes speed; it's the fastest of the birds. It can dive so quickly, and it can focus on whatever it wants to feast on, and it will always catch it. It's it's able to target what it is uh, hunting for, and then obtain what it has targeted. So she has that capacity. Uh, she's very, uh, very clever in being able to aim clearly and then work with whatever she has achieved. <laughs> the last one that I want to speak about is, uh, in a way, the opposite, not opposite, but little bit because he is in the uh, emotional, the watery, uh, tender side of our existence. And he is the one who cares for the creatures and the, the whole of life. He's in, in the text, I describe him as the, the man that will take the shirt off his back to help another. Those in need, whether they are a wing with a broken, a bird with a broken wing, an animal that needs a home, uh, someone living on the street that is uh, needing uh, a meal. This is the guy that is there to help however he can. 
he is the he is the it is the energy of the poet the the uh the 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 empath the one who embraces um from the heart he is also one who can easily be taken advantage of because he his tenderness is such that uh, others can say, oh, you know, he's a pushover, I can use him for this, or I can use him for that. So this is another dynamic that is a very big part of our human character, our human uh, family. Um, and he is, uh, he is in the image, he has a bird, a red uh, parrot on his shoulder. He is uh, with a child sleeping uh, in his uh, leaning against his chest. He has a black cat that is like magic and wonder and uh, spirit world there. He has a sleeping lamb, the white soft baby lamb. And he's holding a tin cup that has a little frog inside that's listening to him because they're having a conversation. So there's this magic there. And this is the quality of, you know, when you think of uh, poets like Neruda, Pablo Neruda, or some of these other extraordinary, heartfelt, beautiful artisans that have given us so much in the realm of the heart. So he represents that. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are longing to see the whole back. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too. Ah! Yeah, it's, so. I, it seems it, the publisher has informed me that it will most probably first be produced at the end of 2023, early 2024. Okay. So we have to wait a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever is precious I have to uh, make sure and takes time to. You see a tree, it takes a long time to grow, yeah. It does, that's right, so. exactly right. You know, uh, the things that grow slowly have a possibility to live long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's kind of encoded inside of them. And I think that we, you know, in, in the world today, we want things very fast. We want things now. Mm -hmm. If it's not fast, then it's no good. But actually, I think um, gradually, gradually, we're coming to realize that there is great value in slowing down and being able to discern the nuances and the beautiful uh, qualities that are missed if you're going too fast. Yes, yes, yes. So soon we're going to get it on the right time, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I would like to say thank you again, Padma. And I oh. see a black, oh, there's a a black, black guy. cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have kitties here. They're <laughs> our, they are our um, partners. Ah, okay. <laughs> I have two black okay. cats too. <laughs> yeah. Much love to you both. Thank you so much yeah. for inviting me to share this new work with you i'm really touched thanks so much yes we thank we you. thank you so much thank much so love much. to you both and all friends Bye. in brazil yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. Bye, my darling. they're gonna be very happy to see you bye 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 <laughs>
como, como não, não se apaixonar? Como não, coisa linda. A gente se apaixonou fazendo também. Teve duas partes, né? Vocês viram? Vocês separaram, né, gente? A gente fez uma gravadinha para ela passar mais informações desse tarô maravilhoso que está por vir. É, e já dá para ver que vai ser algo né, no topo do trabalho dela, de uma vida dedicada à arte. Se o, Zen Tarô, se o Zen Tarô já é maravilhoso, imagina esse. Pois é, pois é. Ela, nossa, tá arrasando. Um privilégio, um privilégio conversar com os saniasmos todos, com todos vocês que já passaram por aqui. Eu quero agradecer de coração o envolvimento de todos os amigos, né? quem já nos deu entrevista e a disponibilidade de compartilhar essas histórias e, e contar da sua vida, né? esse nosso HCO querido aqui. É, é um privilégio mesmo, é uma honra poder fazer parte disso. Né, meu pra, amigo? Para todo, né? <risos> todos nós, é muito tocante esse trabalho, nos, nos faz muito feliz de poder compartilhar isso e em agosto nós voltaremos, dia 2 de agosto, com uma linda entrevista, aliás, é uma entrevista com duas pessoas na Índia, só o que eu vou dizer. Pessoas lindas. Ah, duas pessoas é, é. A Bom, entrevista a é... spoilers. <risos> a entrevista é maravilhosa. É. <risos> Pronto, pronto, chega. <risos> shut up. Alô, <risos> shut up. Shut up. <risos> Gente, é, muito obrigado pela parceria, pela audiência, por estar junto com a gente, por nos apoiar. Isso nos Sim. dá estímulo para continuar. Então, estamos renovados para a quarta temporada, que começa, como eu disse, dia 2 de agosto. Mas... Se nós não estivermos aqui, tem muitas entrevistas, são 77 que podem esco escolher para ver, né? quem não assistiu. Maratona, tem muita né? coisa interessantíssima, emocionante, lindo demais. A gente vai ficar compartilhando nesse período agora algum, algumas coisas desse trabalho. E não esqueçam, lembrem-se que amanhã nós estamos criando o boom da Kundalini, um grande movimento das quartas-feiras, Kundalini pelo Zoom privado, tem que pedir o link para a moça, link e instruções para quem não conhece, meditação Kundalini do Oxo, quartas-feiras, 17h45 para entrar na sala, 18 horas começa e daí não entra mais. É isso, Divya? É exatamente isso. E, gente, o link é o mesmo, tá? Você recebe o link uma vez só, é a chave para a Kundalini, entra no Zoom da Dívia, é sempre o mesmo, não precisa repetir ou pedir novamente, olha só, já fica com esse link, que é o link para você fazer com Daline todas as quartas conosco, juntos, simples assim, e é uma Isso. energia tão boa. Tá lindo, tá lindo, tá e assim lindo. a gente mata a saudade de vocês, vocês matam da gente também, pronto. Exatamente, pronto, da melhor forma, né? Isso. Chacoalhando, dançando, meditando. <risos> Ai, não quero ir embora. <risos> Vamos. Ah, Vamos lá, mais gente. algum recado, amigo? Não, acho que é isso. Amanhã todos na Kundalini. Chame gente. Vamos lá. Chama e gente. Outro... Chama o um amigo. Pode convidar. Não tem problema. Isso. A gente, a gente é para é abrir. É para abrir, para vir, para expandir mesmo a energia, porque a gente está carregando demais essa energia e a gente quer realmente compartilhar com todos mais e mais momentos. Então, vamos, vamos lá. Vamos dia 2 de agosto, Volta Histórias com Oxo, a quarta temporada, já temos várias entrevistas gravadas tão maravilhosas. Gente, promete. Promete, promete. Gente, obrigada por essa temporada. Obrigada, Biro, meu amigo, meu irmãozão. Beijo, Didi. Obrigado por tudo também. Vamos junto. 